9. Ambrogio, allow me to return to your anarchist communism. Frankly I cannot put up with it. Giorgio, ah. I believe you. After having lived your life between codices and books of law in order to defend the rights of the state and those of the proprietors, a society without state and proprietors, in which there will no longer be any rebels and starving people to send to the galleys, must seem to you like something from another world. But if you wish to set aside this attitude, if you have the strength to overcome your habits of mind and wish to reflect on this matter without bias, you would easily understand, that, allowing that the aim of society has to be the greatest well-being for all, one necessarily arrives at anarchist communism as the solution. If you think on the contrary that society is made to engross a few pleasure-loving individuals at the expense of the rest, well. Ambrogio, no, no, I admit that society must have as a goal the well-being of all, but I cannot because of this accept your system. I am trying hard to get inside your point of view, and since I have taken an interest in the discussion I would like, at least for myself, to have a clear idea of what you want, but your conclusions seem to be so utopian, so. Giorgio, but in short, what is it that you find obscure or unacceptable in the explanation that I have given you? Ambrogio, there is. I don't know, the whole system. Let's leave aside the question of right, on which we will not agree, but let us suppose that, as you maintain, we all have an equal right to enjoy the existing wealth, I admit that communism would seem to be the most expeditious arrangement and perhaps the best. But, what seems to me absolutely impossible, is a society without government. You build the whole of your edifice on the free will of the members of the association. Giorgio, precisely. Ambrogio, and this is your error. Society means hierarchy, discipline, the submission of the individual to the collective. Without authority no society is possible. Giorgio. Exactly the reverse. A society in the strict sense of the word can only exist among equals, and these equals make agreements among themselves if in them they find pleasure and convenience, but they will not submit to each other. Those relations of hierarchy and submission, that to you seem the essence of society, are relations between slaves and masters, and you would admit, I hope, that the slave is not really the partner of the master, just as a domestic animal is not the partner of the person who possesses it. Ambrogio, but do you truly believe in a society in which each person does what they want? Giorgio, on condition it's understood that people want to live in a society and therefore will adapt themselves to the necessities of social life. Ambrogio, and if they don't wish to? Giorgio, then society would not be possible. But since it is only within society that humanity, at least in its modern form, can satisfy its material and moral needs, it is a strange supposition that we would wish to renounce what is the precondition of life and well-being. People have difficulty in coming to agreement when they discuss matters in abstract terms, but as soon as there is something to do, that must be done and which is of interest to everybody, as long as no one has the means to impose their will on others and to force them to do things their way, obstinacy and stubbornness soon cease, they become conciliatory, and the thing is done with the maximum possible satisfaction to everyone. You must understand, nothing human is possible without the will of humanity. The whole problem for us lies in changing this will, that is to say it means making people understand that to war against each other, to hate each other, to exploit each other, is to lose everything, and persuading them to wish for a social order founded on mutual support and on solidarity. Ambrogio, so to bring about your anarchist communism you must wait until everybody is so persuaded, and has the will to make it work. Giorgio, oh, no. We'd be kidding ourselves. Will is mostly determined by the social environment, 
and it is probable that while the present conditions last, the great majority will continue to believe that society cannot be organized in other ways from what now exists. Ambrogio, well then? Giorgio, so, we will create communism and anarchism among ourselves, when we are in sufficient numbers to do it, convinced that if others see that we are doing well for ourselves, they will soon follow suit or, at least, if we cannot achieve communism and anarchism, we will work to change social conditions in such a way as to produce a change of will in the desired direction. You must understand, this is about a reciprocal interaction between the will and the surrounding social conditions. We are doing and will do whatever we can do so that we move towards our ideal. What you must clearly understand is this. We do not want to coerce the will of anyone, but we do not want others to coerce our will nor that of the public. We rebel against that minority which through violence exploits and oppresses the people. Once liberty is won for ourselves and for all, and, it goes without saying, the means to be free, in other words the right to the use of land and of the instruments of production, we will rely solely on the force of words and examples to make our ideas triumph. Ambrogio, all right, and you think that in this way we will arrive at a society that governs itself simply through the voluntary agreement of its members? If that is the case it would be a thing without precedent. Giorgio, not as much as you might think. As a matter of fact, in essence it has always been like that, that is if one considers the defeated, the dominated, the oppressed drawn from the lower levels of humanity, as not really part of society. After all, even today the essential part of social life, in the dominant class as in the dominated class, is accomplished through spontaneous agreements, often unconscious, between individuals, by virtue of custom, points of honor, respect for promises, fear of public opinion, a sense of honesty, love, sympathy, rules of good manners, without any intervention by the law and the government. Law and governments become necessary only when we deal with relations between the dominators and the dominated. Among equals everyone feels ashamed to call a policeman, or have recourse to a judge. In despotic states, where all the inhabitants are treated like a herd in the service of the sole ruler, no one has a will but the sovereign, and those whom the sovereign needs to keep the masses submissive. But, little by little as others arrive and achieve emancipation and enter the dominant class, that is society in the strict sense of the word, either through direct participation in government or by means of possessing wealth, society molds itself in ways which satisfy the will of all the dominators. The whole legislative and executive apparatus, the whole government with its laws, soldiers, policemen, judges etc. serve only to regulate and ensure the exploitation of the people. Otherwise, the owners would find it simpler and more economical to agree among themselves and do away with the state. The bourgeois themselves have voiced the same opinion, when for a moment they forget that without soldiers and policemen the people would spoil the party. Destroy class divisions, make sure that there are no more slaves to keep in check, and immediately the state will have no more reason to exist. Ambrogio. But don't exaggerate. The state also does things of benefit to all. It educates, watches over public health, defends the lives of citizens, organizes public services, don't tell me that these are worthless or damaging things. Giorgio, ugh. Done the way the state usually does it, that is hardly at all. The truth is that it is always the workers who really do those things, and the state, setting itself up as their regulator, transforms such services into instruments of domination, turning them to the special advantage of the rulers and owners. Education spreads, if there is in the public the desire for instruction and if there are teachers capable of educating, public health thrives, when the public knows, appreciates, and can put into practice public health rules, and when there are doctors capable of giving people advice, 
the lives of citizens are safe when the people are accustomed to consider life and human liberty sacred and when there are no judges and no police force to provide examples of brutality, public services will be organized when the public feels the need for them. The state does not create anything, at best it is only other a superfluity, a worthless waste of energy. But if only it was just useless. Ambrogio, leave it there. In any case I think you have said enough. I want to reflect upon it. Until we meet again.